Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Uptown Charlotte at rain-soaked Bank of America Stadium. Today, it's the penultimate week of the regular season, week 16, and we've got a good one in store between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers. The holiday season is upon us. We've got the gift of the NFL as we're underway here in week 16. Taking in at the three. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, called it the 26. are they under trying to stop a team that has won five games in a row? Well, to me, it makes their job harder because you know you're going up against an offense that's playing at an elite level, and sometimes you can get too caught up in trying to play the perfect game. You're trying to be too precise, too fine, what? instead of just letting it rip, and I think that's more the priority than trying to be absolutely perfect. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. Looking downfield for Godwin, and that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. So many times we see teams go on the road and have to lean on their running game, but this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Play action. Now Wilson. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. Here's Jackson to return. A pretty good punt, but a nice 13-yard return. And it will be the Panthers' ball first and 10. Start this drive out on the ground. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Now these two teams faced off earlier in the year, right around midseason, back in week nine. And it was the visiting Panthers who came away with the victory in that one. So now they look to take the season series here at home in Charlotte. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll keep it on the ground. Aldridge. They find some open field here. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So it's the big left tackle who gets tagged with a hold. And sometimes you're actually executing the block well, and he starts to slip off of you. And instinctively, you reach out and grab him. And when it's done like that, it's often seen by the official and called. There's the option going left on second down. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. A solid job using his legs. 16 yards and a first down on the keeper. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. A gain of three, second down. The Panthers hit 11-3 and three on the year, and they have certainly got it rolling as of late. Winners of six in a row. And I think this is where, as a head coach, you show your team some trust. Instead of just talking about winning, you know, the very next game, you point out to them, we're on a nice run here, and if we keep doing this, we'll be playing at home in the postseason. And we know that that could ride us all the way to the Super Bowl if we get that done. Seven yards there and a first down. 
Another fine carry from the NFL's rushing leader. And quarterbacks typically dominating the MVP balloting. But I think you got to give this guy serious consideration, don't you? I agree totally. I mean, he's leading the league in rushing. And let's face it, partner, the running back renaissance in the NFL, it's real. And it's really helping teams along the way. He's a prime example. Got to give him strong consideration for MVP talk. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. Good job there keeping him to a short game. Of course, he's coming off a really terrific performance, reigning NFC Defensive Player of the Week. And I know people get caught up in, well, if you're the reigning Defensive Player of the Week, you must have made a bunch of spectacular plays. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack, and it'll lead to a third and long. They've gobbled up over 30 yards of turf so far, but a sack knocks them backwards. And that interrupts the momentum they were building. Good opportunity for the defense to escape this drive before they get to the end zone. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Trying to fit it into more, but it's intercepted. the kicking team here for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And, of course, this a critical game in regards to not just the division race, but playoff seeding as well. They are a game up, but a loss here could really muddy the waters. And both of these teams want to clear things up about how they feel about each other and their standing in the league because these two teams, they've really been the cream of the crop in their division. So this game, it's been looming up both of their schedules. On second down, Aldridge, and this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. This running game so important for them, and they know that and helped lead him to a victory last week when he was over 100 yards. Let's face it, it's their identity, and that's what they want to play to. They want to be that team that runs the ball really well each and every week, and right now we're seeing a pretty good pattern of that happening. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. This defense for the Buccaneers, they were very good last week in the win over New Orleans. And I think our statistician okay, ended up having to bring the blue tent and put it around him for a while because he was developing a hand injury from having to write down all the turnovers this team forced. Five, six, seven, eight. Absolutely unbelievable. I hope he'll recover. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 11 yards and a Panther first down. But just a simple tap pass, but it pays off in a big way. And sometimes the simple stuff causes the most problems for a defense because there's a breakdown in communication there. When that receiver goes behind the line of scrimmage and it looks like he's going in motion, someone either has to go with him or he has to be passed off to another defender. Somehow they didn't get that communicated well, and it turned into a nice play. And down to the 44, five yards that time. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Charlotte, and it's the Panthers with the football as they are looking at a second and five situation. They're going to look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Man, he'll lose yardage here back at the 47. It'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And third and eight now. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. 
It kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. Really good effort. He does it himself, picks up 15, also picks up the first down. Well, partner, this drive has been a model of efficiency. They've done everything they've wanted to, and the defensive guys, they've got to be getting frustrated. They can't figure out how to get off the field. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 50 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. We used to work relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he will take it across for Panthers' touchdown. A great effort there with touchdown number 23 here on the year. And the Panthers are an extra point away from drawing level. A good hold in these red conditions. The point after is up and good. And we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. offense set to begin their next possession and on the first drive three and out and I know that these are professional athletes but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still don't you those don't ever go away and typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing if you don't have nerves at the start of a game it's not going to be a great day for you you're not really ready to play so finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way that's what all the guys are looking for They go play action now. Wilson looking downfield for Godwin. And got his man complete. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. So now following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature in the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. From the gun, it's Wilson. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Look like both sides were anticipating a quick throw there. And the defense is ready to jump in and deny it. And they did. on second down. Now they need a big play here. Third and ten. They go play action with Wilson. Across the formation, he finds Godwin. And a nice job to break free with one tackle but it slowed his momentum somewhat and he's taken down right after. They'll give him four yards there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell us end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. Hey, check that, check that. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. 
and they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football from moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. Right back to him on first down. And he'll take this to the 46. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. Two minutes remaining in the first half, 10-7, our score. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's I miles am. away and smiling. And happy. On second down now, Aldridge. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. They'll keep it on the ground. Aldridge, and he'll be stopped well short. Only two yards there, fourth and three. Now the Bucs going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And this one is right down Broadway. And it will knot us up at 10. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. Here, yep. they are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Yep. And now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Play action. It's Wilson. Flush to his right. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Here's Wilson. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. That winds up pushing him back 11 yards on the sand. And that'll bring a third. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. They kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. 15, 15, 15. Third and long, it's Wilson. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And unable to connect, incomplete. But give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Panthers will take over now, first and 10. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Second and eight. Now a give right side, Aldridge, and he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. Now another timeout called for by the offense, so that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. This is third and one, very likely four down territory even if they don't get it though. They'll keep it on the ground, Aldridge. 
And he is going to have a Panthers first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and ten. Now a handoff up the middle. Aldridge now whistles in a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half on as the field goal unit to see about getting three points. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. So we have reached halftime here at a good one. 10-10 is our score. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Well, you don't see that often. He just mishit it, and it goes out of bounds. Well, I know sitting up here, and I'm looking at you, and you're looking at me, and I know we're both thinking the same thing. Isn't it easy enough to keep it between the sidelines? Because unless you're intentionally doing it for some reason, well, that's a costly miss hit, and now you put your team in a bad spot. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Back to throw here. Can't get away, and he's taken down. He couldn't get away. He'll wind up losing a dozen yards, a 12-yard loss, and it brings up third. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. They'll look to throw. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked off by Jamel Dean. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago and threw the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go well. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. On second down, Aldridge. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up fourth down. Here's the Panthers punter now. As he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. They'll score that a 36-yard punt. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for 
is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. And that's his second sack in this one. And he just can't have the defensive end or an edge rusher to play any better than what we're seeing right now. And Martin, it's still just the third quarter. I'm thinking he's not done yet. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Jeremy Chin picks it off. We're seeing plays like this from him, and I, I think he's in line. We've discussed it before for NFL defensive player of the year. And a big reason why, I think, is because of his ball skills. And that's something that, for guys of his position, they've talked about it for years. They've done the drills. But they've really increased it in recent seasons because of the offensive getting so good. He knows how to take the ball away. That is huge for a defender. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Looking to throw. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. You get the sense that they're saying, we're not playing up to what we're capable of, and we're deep enough into the game that the early jitters are long gone, that they should now have some sense of continuity and be able to make some of these plays that they have not been doing so far. From the seven now, it's third and goal. Call it no gain on the play, so no help there. And now fourth and goal. Now here's the Panthers special teams unit to try a field goal for three. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And his kick here is good. So kind of disappointing there. I mean, yes, they get the three, but with starting field position like that, three's not what you're banking on. No, and you just have to wonder if you can afford to let chances like that continue to pass you by. You've got to find ways to get the ball to the end zone and put sixes on the scoreboard. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position. Now White lost the football. Wow. That ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks them up. And avoids the turnover. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Now a throw here to his running back. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. Caught that look from you there, Paige, on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. And he'll get this just inside the 30-yard line. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Bucs. They've got the football. They also are in front here on the scoreboard as we start the fourth. From the 29, Wilson. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. And the Panthers are right back in this football game. A critical error there in a tight game in the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, 
you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the Jets' sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house, so they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Carlton Davis picks it, and the Buccaneers are going to take possession of the football. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because so here we are in December, right? It is a season of giving, maybe for his own sake. And he loses the football a second time, and it's picked up by the Panthers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, partner, here's where team football gets tested a little bit because I know the defensive guys were over there chilling on the sidelines, and all of a sudden, they heard the sudden change call because that fumble puts them right back on the field, and they've got to go out and finish the game now themselves. Absolutely. Nursing that slim lead here in the fourth, a costly turnover. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. Aldridge, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. They'll set up to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That'll be a pickup of four as they work with his four-point fourth-quarter lead. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move them. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he's going to be taken down at the 39, clearly short of the first by a few yards. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down. But the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. So not only do they convert on fourth, but they pick up 22 yards in the process. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this run. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. Eighth play of the drive, fourth coming, and they need eight yards on third down. Now back to throw. That pass complete to Moore. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 20-yard line. To give him 17 yards that time is going to move the chains. On first down, Aldridge. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. Aldridge. And all the way down inside the five and the four. And even 150.
50 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. From the two now, second and goal. Three, three. They'll try the left side. Aldridge, and he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. On third down, Aldridge. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow, wow. Point after, right down the middle. So it's now a three-point game here in the closing stages as a field goal now can only tie it. The Carolina kick team is out there ready to go, and they kick this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Had one tell me once, you know, we were having a tough patch. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. And if I we kept having a rough patch, he said, but you've got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Third and long coming up defensively. You pressure the quarterback or drape on over the passing lane? Yes, that's exactly what you do. It's both because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. If you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. This pass is going to wind up incomplete. With that incompletion, reality is staring them right in the face. This entire game is down to the next snap. Here we go. It's Wilson on fourth down. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he takes this almost to midfield. So they needed a pretty good size play, and they got it. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. That's what we're used to seeing from him right there. Plays like that, why he's number four in the league in terms of receiving yardage. Able to make adjustments all along the way. Doesn't matter where he lines up, where he releases from. Working his way into the secondary, figures out defenses and finds weak spots in order to get open. Wilson to throw. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. 